the water system. It's something that the Forever Winter really gets some flack for from certain players, but I don't think it's that difficult. I'd like to explain why. First off, for those who don't know about the Forever Winter's water system, it's a pretty simple system. You loot water in the end game, you do quests in the game, and you get water. One water is 24 hours of time for your innards, which is your social hub and vendor hub with all of your quests. It's where your inventory is stored, and it's what allows you to buy medicine, upgrade your rigs, buy better weapons, and whatnot. And without water, you lose your innards. You lose your upgrades, you lose your innards upgrades, you lose your inventory, you lose your credits. But you keep your character, you keep your character experience. So all that experience you gained, all that knowledge you gained, and all that health that you gained by prestiging your characters, you still retain. So you're still going to have a very strong character, even if you run out of water and your inventory is wiped. People give the system a lot of flack, and I feel like it's the people who are extremely casual and afraid of losing everything that give it flack. People who actually play the game will tell you, it's not that bad. It's easy to get water. I'm here to tell you why you're bad. So, first off, you start the game, and you do a tutorial to grab a jug of water, and clear out the innards, and put in your first water, giving you 24 hours to keep all of your guns and credits, and you'll be sent on a few chain quests in a row, that you're locked into this series of individual quests. You haven't opened up the rest of the quests in the game, so you're forced to find uh, your open drone parts is one that I got stuck on for quite a bit. But once you've finished all these quests, you open up all the different terminals for the other factions in the game, and all of them provide quests with different rewards. Now, most of these quests reward water. So, you can gain water by looting, and you start the game off with very small rigs that have only one equipment slot, and you can only carry one water. So when you go into a mission, that's all you're taking out. You can only bring one water out. But as you level up and gain better rigs and buy them, you end up being able to have the potential to leave a raid with 72 hours of water. Now, the time it takes to play a mission varies between, honestly, as long as you want, because you can go in and you can get in and out in 10 minutes or less, or you can spend 30 or 40 minutes if you decide to stealth the entire mission and be a non-combatant, which is how I played the game when I first started, so that I could get out with what I wanted without having to use an extensive amount of weapons because I didn't have an armory of guns to just slaughter every single enemy in front of me. And that's how you'll probably start Forever Winter off. You'll start off, you'll start off slow, and you'll start off safe, and you'll start off as a scavenger. And that is what the game has advertised, is you're not the guy, and you've got your tiny rig, and you've got a very small amount of space in your rig to put in, you know, your few magazines of ammunition and your couple of guns that you have. But as you get better and you get stronger, it gets easier to get water. These quests also provide a lot of water on top of what you're looting of what you're doing. So there's just so many options where if you go to Elephant Mausoleum, save civilians, one water. You get two explosives, which you can do in one mission or in multiple. You get two days of water, and this is a reward on top of usually XP and credits and faction rating, which allows you to buy the better weaponry as you get the higher rep levels. So the questing system becomes really important because you want to keep this reputation up high. And before you have big rigs, to go and sell your wealth of items that you have that ends up giving you all this extra reputation, quests will be your better way to earn reputation because you won't be able to hold a lot in your tiny standard rig. So the problem here is people come in and say, well, I don't like the water system. I don't like losing everything I've worked for. I don't lose like losing my inventory. And that I have to say, if you don't have the time to go gather a few water, play an hour a week, where these missions take anywhere between 10 20 minutes on average, I'd say, uh, to gather one water or do a quest that just 
has you leave the map to get a water. You know, it's just these quests that are press a button, sneak up and press a button, get one water. Open up two doors, get one water. You know, hack a terminal, get one water. Kill one boss enemy, get five days of water. There's so many options for getting water. Deliver a part within the mission, water. Kill 15 Eurasians, get two water. Grab a data cache, an elephant mausoleum, get a water. Deliver mech components, get a water. You know, this, this quest doesn't work, though, and that's an early access thing. So, it's a little scuffed, because it still is a development, but the thing is, if you can't afford the time to play 10, 20 minutes and get one water for a day, if you can't gather five water, then maybe you shouldn't buy a game that says you're not the guy and a hardcore extraction shooter, or at least that's what it's advertised to be. See, the Forever Winter is actually really easy and it's an illusion right now because the game is designed to be hard and it is hard and it is hardcore but the weapons are powerful the weapons are devastating and eventually you end up with large rigs where you're able to slot in a lot of ammunition so you'll end up taking excessive amounts of ammo you'll be very wealthy and things are still subject to change and balance it is early access and i do feel like uh as far as Things I'd like to tell Fun Dog Studio, definitely up the difficulty, up the threats, up the things that slow down the players. Because when you get to a point where you're high level in the game, you're able to slot hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of bullets of ammunition. Kill all the enemies in the map. And the threat is merely a hunter-killer spawn. And as new threats emerge and new mechanics emerge, I hope that scabs get punished for trying to be the guy. But for now, you can be the guy. And getting water is easy. And if you can't get water, you don't have enough time to play, maybe don't pick and choose to play a hardcore extraction shooter. Maybe play something easier. But for now, it's the amount of water that you can acquire, the upgrades you can acquire, you can have more than three months of water rolling on the counter. I'm currently at 91 days. I stopped gathering water. I've played the game maybe 60 or 70 hours, so I've played a bit. But, as you can see, I still have water on standby. And I haven't played for a handful of days. And I haven't put water in the system. And I have 142 days of water left. So, I'm pretty sure I'll be fine. I'm pretty sure you'll be fine. And if you just do the quests, then you'll be fine. And the game starts off difficult. And yes, you'll have to do the first few quests, and that will be... Some of the hardest things you'll do because you'll be running around with a surplus rifle and a surplus shotgun and you'll have a tiny rig and you'll be trying to gather one water and get it out alive without pissing off all of the AI. But once you get past that point and you start getting some mid-level rigs, you're going to be able to carry a lot more equipment and you're going to have a lot more options and things that you can bring back, take out, and sell. And all these things will start making you more money and giving you more options. And all these quests are going to rotate and change as you do them. And you'll have so many options to say, go grab two explosives. And I could go in right now. I could go into Ash and Mesa. And, uh... And I could actually just... You know, I could just straight up... Why can I not go back? There we go. I can go to Ash and Mesa. I can go to the Entry Point. I can go to City Ruins. I could go into the mission. There's explosives typically inside the city. I can leave out the bridge, or I can leave out bunkers, and I've just done a quest, and I've got 48 hours of water now. And it starts to stack up very fast. So, ultimately, if you can't get water in the Forever Winter, especially in the early access state that it's in, you're just bad. You haven't given the game a chance. You haven't taken the time and patience to loot a few drone parts. You haven't opened up the quests. And even then... The what you truly lose is just guns and rigs. Your character is still going to be insanely powerful. And you can walk away from the game after playing it a bunch, and you'll still be able to come back 30, 50, 90 days later 
if you play a bunch, and you'll have all this stashed up. So if you were really enjoying the game, and you go, wow, I don't want to lose everything, you might not need to play for a month. So, yes, people leave. People go do things in real life. You have time to do that. If you're going to be gone for more than 100 days, and you can't log in for three minutes to put water in your game, then yeah, you might experience water death for abandoning the enters. Also, side note, the water system in the credits of this game, because this is a co-op game, and it is not a PvP game, can be easily modified. So if you really don't like the water system, it's based on your computer's internal clock. If you really don't like being broke, people have used Cheat Engine to give themselves infinite credits. So, there's options to circumvent that if you're truly just trying to play this game for the experience of it, and you don't want to lose that. Does that mean the game should have a softcore system? that makes it so that there is no water system, and I don't think, I don't think so. I think it's only a mild encouragement to play. I think it's, uh, I think it's, I think it scares, and it's a, it's a scapegoat. It's a scapegoat argument for the game. And even as an early access game that you can play casually, if you can find an hour or two to play a week, you can easily get enough water for the entire week. And if you don't have an hour or two a week to play a game that you bought, to play that you knew was a hardcore extraction shooter that says you're not the guy and then you complain about the difficulty maybe it isn't the game for you and so maybe your system or your concerns about the water system are actually valid because you're just bad and that's the water system in the forever winter